Hey, this is Nate Story with Brad Agritech, and today we're going to talk about sump tanks, what they do and why they're important for indoor systems as well as outdoor systems. So you guys hear me talking about sump systems a lot. I use the word sump left, I use the word sump right. You're probably wondering, um, if, if you haven't taken the time to go look it up, uh, go Google it, you know, what is this guy talking about? When we talk about a sump tank, we're talking about a, basically a, a, the, the collection tank for all of the runoff from the system. So if we're doing it in a greenhouse, uh, you guys uh, have seen our pictures from our greenhouses where we've buried an IBC in the ground and everything just gravity flows down to it. Um, in warehouse systems as well, we use sump systems a lot, sump tanks. And there are a few different kinds of sump tanks out there. So today I wanted to talk about those different kinds of tanks and why they're important for indoor systems. So um, we've already gone through the greenhouse one. I'm not gonna get into that. But the purpose is the same, whether we're doing it in a greenhouse, whether we're doing it outdoors, or whether we're doing it indoors. If we're capturing effluent from our irrigation, we wanna capture it and be able to reuse it within the system. So we do that with a sump tank. It's just a tank that, that sits here that captures effluent and that we use to pump to, to some other place. Now in, in this system uh, right here, this is kind of one of our seedling racks here, and we have a sump down here, uh, a quick connect sump, that captures uh, all of the drainage from the seedling system and stores it. And then it just kicks on on a timer, pumps up, and it all siphons back down again. So this is a single pump system. Basically, all of the water flows into this sump tank and one pump takes care of the entire system. The alternate uh, system or setup for these sump tanks is called a two pump system. And uh, if you guys remember back to some of the greenhouse videos I've done on sump systems, you remember that I'm not a huge fan of two pump systems for greenhouses, but I'm a huge fan of two pump systems for warehouses. And if you remember, the issues that I have with two pump systems are typically uh, that there is more uh, points for failure, right? So if one thing goes bad here or one thing goes bad there, we can actually have a big problem on our hands. Well, what we can do though uh, is very inexpensively design redundancy into the system in a way that lets us use two pumps really, really effectively. So single pump systems are typically used when um, everything is elevated above the sump position. So when all of the, um, when the water level in your sump tank is below the lowest water level in your system, that usually means that like if we're in a greenhouse, we're actually sinking that sump in the ground. So digging down, setting it in the ground so it's below everything else. Um, but as you know, in a warehouse, we can't really do that. Well, we can with like a seedling system right like this, right, where it's kind of elevated high up off of the ground. The problem is, is when we have a big mixing tank, say we're using an IVC uh, full of water, that's gonna, the water level is gonna be four feet off the ground. So how do we drain from something sitting on the ground to four feet off the ground? You can't do it with a one pump sump system. You have to do a two pump system. So this is a two pump sump system. Um, and when we say two pumps, basically what we're talking about is a, uh, we've got a pump in our sump tank, so we've got a low, uh, shallow sump here, and then we've got our ta main tank up here with our main pump in there. So we're talking about the main pump and then the sump pump. And uh, that's important to understand because, um, you know, this main pump up here is doing most of the work for our system. It's the pump that's really uh, pushing a lot of water out under pressure to all of our zip racks. And our sump pumps down here, are actually just kind of kicking water up to the top. So we can use relatively small, inexpensive pumps for our sump pumps. That's an important thing to note because one of the ways we get around the dangers of failure with a two pump system is by actually putting multiple pumps in our sump. So uh, what you'll see is that we have uh, two pumps down here running on float switches. So these are switches that basically as the water level rises, it turns the switch on and it activates the pump. And as the water level falls back down, that float inverts and turns the pump off. And um, it basically means that, uh, you know, the pump kicks on when this starts to fill up and it turns off when, um, when the water level drops. So when it dr uh, draws water levels down to a really, really low level. 
that's a really good thing to know because uh, we can run one pump. We can actually do all of the work with a single pump. But the problem is uh, if you don't have a second pump in your sump, when that first pump goes out, your sump can either overflow or your system uh, you know, stops moving water and it's overflowing out in your main system area. It can be a big, big mess. And so by putting our pumps on float switches, we've got a backup pump at all times. So if the first pump fails, if I come by in the morning and I notice that pump one is running and pump two isn't, or pump two is running and pump one isn't, I know that pump one burned up and I've got to replace it ASAP. Now the nice thing about it is we're using really inexpensive pumps. So it means that switching out burned out pumps is easy, it's fast, and um, most importantly, it's really inexpensive. So uh, this is just kind of how we like to organize our sump. What this is, is it's, it's incorporating redundancy, right? So instead of engineering a bunch of redundancy solutions in, we've basically just dropped an extra pump and a float switch in. I've always got a backup that will kick on and run if pump number one burns out. So uh, one thing to note is that our float switches in here are set at, at different heights. So pump number one kicks on at a lower uh, water level, uh, which means that you know if we need both pumps running, that second one will kick on when the water level rises. So set them at different heights, and uh, they won't both run at the same time unless you really need to. The other thing that I wanted to mention is we're on a flat warehouse floor here. This is cement. We can't afford to cut open the cement and drop a sump in. So that's where these uh, systems become really important, is when you can't sink a sump into the floor. If that were the case, we'd just drop this whole IBC down into the concrete and we'd run a one pump system. So it's also important to note that this sump is a shallow sump. And that's important because we're dropping basically 14 inches from the bottom of our towers to this sump. The top of this sump is almost level with the bottoms of our towers out in the warehouse. So um, basically all of this flow to the sump itself is based on hydraulic pressure. So it's all of the pressure in the tubing, in the gutters, in the zip racks, all just kind of pushing that water down. It's all just gravity flowing into the sump tank. And keeping the water level low in the sump tank uh, means that we get better flow from the racks to here because there's a bigger difference between the water level out in the warehouse and the water level in this sump tank. Hey, I hope this video is really useful to you guys. We love sharing uh, what we're doing here at Bright Agritech. Um, if you're interested in more information, check out the blog. Uh, we're always posting a lot of great information there kind of to, to help with content that we're presenting in these videos as well. So thanks so much for tuning in and uh, keep your eye out for our next video.